Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ava and today in this Neverwinter video, I'm going to show you what my morning routine looked like, like for every morning that I pretty much was playing Neverwinter. I'm kind of ashamed of it, but at the same time, I thought maybe, maybe it would be helpful to someone. I don't even know why I think that, but anyway, this is what it looked like every morning. I kind of got it started a little bit already, so I apologize for that. I grabbed my daily key and I I think I like messed around on the first two characters, but ultimately I'm going to show you what I have to do. And there's a lot of characters, so buckle up. Okay, so I start all my characters day off in Velosk, and I usually try and put them back there by the end of the day. I'm not like actively playing right now, so they're not like all scattered around or anything, but whenever I am playing, sometimes they'll be in a bunch of different places. So I want to make sure I put them back in Velosk. There's a few reasons why. It's pretty quiet here, so there's faster load-ins. But I don't know, like a few years back, it started to become really challenging to fast loop through all of your characters. Like, for some reason, it just, like, disconnects you from the game, like, constantly. I'm sure this is a console issue. I don't know. But anyway, it would just say retrieving list of characters, and then it would, like, boot you out of the game and take forever to get you back into it. So this kind of, like, process became less fun as time went on. It was already a chore, but it was kind of like a fun chore. But now it's more of like a really annoying chore. And I think it's one of the reasons why I kind of just gave up on it at some time and said, you know what? I'm walking away for now. I'll come back when I care. Anyway, so yes, I start in Veloc mainly because it's a fast load time and the door is right here and you can quickly travel to where you need to go. In our case, I always travel to the workshop. Normally, I will pray first and get their little baggy thing, but I already did that on this character, so I can't show you that I do that. And then I'll just open up their box and grab what they need. My cleric makes like stuff for potions, so you know, she's all snazzy like that, but the rest of them don't really do that. Oh, I got a treasure map, some other things. Normally I'll grab the VIP bag on the last character that I'm on so that the menu pulls up this page first, but because I already did that, I'm gonna have to tab over and grab the baggie on each one, but normally I will get that for each character for the rerolls. Don't ask me why, it was just kind of like a part of the routine. You never know, you might need to play that random character. And every once in a while, I'll just refine their rough AD if they have it available to refine. And every once in a while, I'll grab their celestial coins, but normally I'll wait for it to tell me that I'm completely out before I even mess with it, like I'm completely capped, should I say, before I even mess with it. But the workshop is like ideal. To get to the workshop, you have to get through Velosk and then it unlocks the ability to do the workshop. And if you want to start crafting, my recommendation is to go into leatherworking and then buy leather and just buy as much as you can, like in this case, like, I don't know, 999. It's gonna cost you five gold. And when you get out of Velosk, you like conveniently enough have five gold, which is pretty cool. And then you will just go over to leatherworking in this section and you're going to make visors. Just grab whatever guy, I mean, the speed guy is good or the commission guy is good. I'll go for speed. <laughs> I'm going to go for negative commission because I'm only going to check this usually once a day, so I don't really need speed. And then like order every 10 minutes. If you are feeling really snazzy that day, you can also use all of your morale and make them as well. But you have to be some kind of psycho to have that much time because I was doing this on 55 characters at one point and I literally was logging on in the morning. And then at night, I hadn't even finished them. I mean, I was getting off to go to bed, so you'd be some kind of crazy to do that. Anyway, it's gonna go over here and fill up over time. She ran out of leather, it happens. It's been a while since I've been on the character to even care about it, but I wanted to show you. I think like the last video that I had made, oh, she made some fish, nice. And also, you don't have to go back to Velosk. If you just log them out, in the workshop, it's just gonna put them right back where they were. So you can just literally change character and 
tomorrow they'll be back where they were in Velosk. Anyway, like I was saying, I think the last video I made was the Warlock build. And I was playing the Warlock a lot before I like stepped away and was playing some other games. I remember going, wow, the Warlock's like really good. And I haven't played any of the new campaigns since, to be honest with you. And I was thinking like, you know, aside from like the Bard being obviously pretty powerful, the Warlock is definitely kind of one of those like really good all around healers now. So good for it, honestly. It's done its thing. This was the next person that hadn't grabbed their baggie, so... We also have mail, but I'm going to say it's probably something expired. We're just going to leave it there. And if you're going through this many characters and you forget something, it's like, it's just going to happen. You just kind of have to deal with it and you won't even remember, to be fair. I'm going to say this is probably more expired stuff, to be fair. I haven't been on the game in a while to know. Oh wait, does something sell? Ooh, nice. That's pretty cool. Guess I had some good stuff to sell. I don't know. I have stuff everywhere. At some point, I feel like I just need to give it all away because it's been sitting there for years. See, this is the problem that made it very difficult to enjoy this game. It would always say retrieving the list of characters and then it would log you out. There's there's literally no benefit now to having 55 characters if you can't like speed run through the morning process and like, if you're sitting there connecting to Shard Provider, literally, like, indefinitely, this is just so much a waste of time. Even more a waste of time than just, like, outright playing the game, right? I don't know when it started doing that, but it was a long time ago. And I can't believe I let myself live through it that long. Summerfest was one of those, like, really crappy eras for me because I was having to get on all the characters again to get, like, the pinatas to turn all that into yada yada yada. But, uh, <clears throat> it was terrible because I kept getting stuck in that screen and it was like, I just want to get my pedals. I just want to get the pinatas. Why are you doing me so dirty like this? There's like some achievements that keep popping up. I don't even know what's going on. And pretty much it, you just go up to the box, you grab your visors. If you're not familiar with why I'm making visors, like you make it really easily in leatherworking, but you're making the visors because you can sell them for like 34 silver or whatever. They add up really quickly with gold. Some people probably make other stuff. I've always just made visors. Like, I don't know. There's not many ways to make money in this game. And this was just kind of one of those side things where it was like, well, at least I have infinite gold. And every once in a while, I could sell a stack of it once I, get, you know, just get more gold than I know what to do with. But definitely kind of got a dragon vibe where I just love gold. And it was just one of those things I just constantly wanted to do. You might see that I have Oh man, I'm in pain. Listen, some would say, why do you even have 55 characters? But my question is, why does the game let you have 55 characters? It could let you not, and then you wouldn't have to worry about the, oh, what if I had 55 characters plotline? And then all of that could just go out the door. It used to be 55 characters was actually very useful. <sighs> I don't really know what I think about it now since you can't like log into the character half the time and it just kicks you out like super not fun. I think one of the main questions that might come up is why do you have so many rogues? Um, and I think the answer to that is it just was easier to level them to Velosk um, to unlock the professions at the time. Um, I had a whole bunch of characters, and then when they changed the level to 20, they all got ranked up to 20, and then I decided to delete a bunch of them, thinking that I was going to have some, like, really cool, like, <laughs> this is going to sound stupid, I thought I was going to have some, like, really cool leveling content creation where I was going to show people how to get to a certain level or how to level a certain class, um, just kind of showing the, well, it disconnected again, so we have time to talk. Just kind of showing what it's like leveling up to 20. So I was opening up a bunch of slots to do that, and I didn't really want to, like, max out my characters at that time. This was, like, years ago at this point. Um, it was, like, right when the level 20s became a thing, I guess. So I don't even remember when that was, but at this point it was a long time ago. Yeah, I thought the best way to do that, the content stuff, was to start on new characters. But then what ended up happening is I just didn't feel like doing that and I just ended up making a bunch of rogues because they were the fastest to get through the little leveling portions of the game. 
and that it just became that. So, I mean, I hear rogues are really busted at the moment. Some other cool things about having 55 characters, I remember it was kind of the time where you could get anything out of any piece of content at this point. Like you could pull, I think I pulled like weird things like a quickling from um, like a skirmish or something. And I started to think, well, if I just get them all to 20 and get their rerolls, I can use their rerolls and run skirmishes on them rather than running them on my main classes that I have and be able to just use up our, all their rerolls and get random stuff out of it. I was I was definitely tenacious and way in over my head because you just really don't have time after you get through this terrible process of getting through all of your invoke and grabbing your baggies and grabbing your professions. Um, you just, you simply don't have time to also go do that stuff. But there was an attempt. There definitely was an attempt. So at this point, I think it's worth speeding up this video to getting to the very end. Um, and then you can see how long it takes for me or I'm going to, I'm timing it. Like I only, I started about, I already started like 15 minutes ago. So, so we're like really moving at snail speed. I think the other, maybe last two things that I think are super beneficial for having a bunch of characters is the backspace if you're a hoarder. Um, I'm not calling myself out. I forgot to go to the workshop on the other one, so I had to log back into it. But yeah, if you're a hoarder, that's good. Also, if you're wanting to collect these uh, celestial coins and try and get more call notes or opening it on doubles or something like that, I feel like those are some scenarios in which it, they're useful. But at this point, I don't think my, I mean, my main outlook on it now is I don't think all these characters are worth it whatsoever they're not worth the time they're not worth purchasing the character slots so like use your ad for good and just don't do it <laughs> i mean you could probably have like 20 comfortably i mean when we were doing like summer fest or and we're doing the saha balls and i was grabbing them literally every day i i think i was losing my mind Eas i was easily losing my mind i don't even think i was like, I was going insane having to log on all these characters. It's not like anyone was telling me I had to. It's like I was saying, oh, you got to go on. You got to grab all this stuff because you're going to be tossing out loads of Saha balls to people and everyone's just going to get crap loads of petals and it's just going to be a really fun time. It was fun, but it was it didn't last long. Like, the amount of time it takes to collect all the Saha balls to sit in the event with the most outdated Saha event ever. Oh my god, it was brutal. And, and then to just, like, within, like, a few hours have the whole process done, it just is one of those things, like, I don't like to cook because it takes forever and then you can only enjoy the meal for a very short period of time like <laughs> i think it's like that same concept where I, I was cooking up all these saha balls and then i ate them and it wasn't worth it it was too short-lived so i do go through still i do go through co the comments and questions and sometimes i'll pan through and try and answer things but since i've been like taking a break from the game there has been like a lot of times where I think I've had people I like, ask, what have I been up to? Uh, am I coming back to, to the game? Um, or like, you know, where am I at in it? And do I, did I need help getting back into it? I mean, at this time, no, I don't have any intention of like playing at the end game level or anything. I've pretty much done everything that, you know, I wanted to achieve when I was playing the game. I don't have like any qualms with like being away from it and I don't have any issues with the game in general. I think my step away was more just at a time after Demon Web Pits um, and just kind of getting through a good amount of that and that mod and then kind of walking away and going, you know what, I think that like I might be done for some time. I don't know how long, you know, I don't know what the you never have a stamp on when you're going to come back and i don't think many people do but when we found out that the next mod was going to be a trial which was the uh mdom i think that's what it's called and we went and watched it um when pc was playing it on preview and i thought it looked i mean i'm going to be straightforward i thought it looked terrible 
I did not like it whatsoever, the look of it. I thought this, I don't want this. First of all, we're, me and my friends, we're dungeon people. We really like dungeons. Like trials are fine, but dungeons are like, I think the better version of it. I like going through them, like challenging myself in dungeons and um, I don't know, something a little bit more personal about that. It's also very challenging to get together like 10 people consistently. I've gone through phases where I'm like the, how do you put it? I'm like, I'm the raid leader and I'm having to put, pull people together and try and get, you know, people to show up. And it's so annoying when they don't. It's one thing when it's like, oh, we can't run the dungeon tonight because somebody's got something to do. It's another thing when people are like, oh, yeah, I'll be there. And then they don't show up. It's like, you got to find the other nine people and they need to be accountable. But they usually aren't. So anyway, long story short, that's why we were more of dungeon people. And we found the next one was going to be a trial. We were thinking about playing it, but then I saw it. We all saw it and thought it did not look good at all. Let's just not play it. It sounds like there's not really anything worth getting out of it. Maybe some healer stuff. Um, And it turned out like a lot of people... Oh, my God. It turned out a lot of people agreed with that sentiment, but they might have still played it. And it just... A lot of people seem like they don't really like that trial so I don't I didn't feel too bad also thinking that and then I would have probably felt worse if people like, oh you know it's great it's like really good and, and challenging but it, it really wasn't and I think that a lot of people didn't really like it anyway I can't speak for everyone but I'm glad that we didn't play it but then it kind of pushed me further and further away from like wanting to do the next thing and the next thing, and the next thing, until the point where we're like, okay, well, we haven't played for a while, and probably have a long break ahead of us, especially with, like, Neverwinter going over to the new developer, or whatever, and the game seemingly being pretty slow. Um, we're a part of discords where people were, like, not even able to fill five seats for the dungeon, the new dungeon, so there was, like, a lot of, well, Thank gosh we're not really having to deal with this right now. It's it's quite a shame because I've always thought Neverwinter had really good potential to be a really big game. And I think that there was just a, what, a lot of care was not given to it that it deserved. Um, but it's like, is it too late now for it? I don't know. Yeah, I'm just one person that plays the game randomly and that's about it. But I did, I did find it fun and I really, my favorite part about playing Neverwinter later on was being able to like make builds, show people what I'm using and like just kind of like discuss with the community um, just some fun things about healers because I was like the only person that played a healer in my group of friends and I didn't really ever have much to talk with them about but um, I met a lot of people that like to talk about that stuff so it was really worth it to have like create a channel and actually start talking to people about healer stuff and I got to meet some really awesome people and just keep doing that for a long time and at, at some point you just kind of run dry with the idea of like you know is it worth continuing trying to make content I know there's like some content creators for this game that are putting stuff out every day and honestly I, I don't even know how they do it it seems like super exhausting Oop, I need to buy some leather yeah, anyway, it just seems super exhausting to constantly have to put out content for this game. Like, you can probably make a lot of stuff and constantly talk about it, but at some point I'm thinking, like, are you trapped? Are you a prisoner of having to talk about the game all the time? I can't do that. Like, I've got to be enjoying it to make stuff off of it, and at some point when I'm kind of stepping away from it, I'm like not enjoying it anymore. You're probably not going to see much content from me on it and it's a very hard game to indefinitely enjoy because it has so many like issues I mean logging in and out of the game might be one thing but it does have a lot of you can't defend it forever there's so many times where it's just like there's something broken there's constantly there's constantly something broken or being able to be exploited there's constantly an issue where people aren't able to get something that they earned you know there's just like so many weird things and sometimes it's there's you get stuff that you didn't deserve and I don't know like I don't really care about how people complete the content I don't really care what people do to exploit but whenever you're trying to play the game and and they've put something out that is unplayable or having issues constantly it makes it so not fun and that's when I can't like blindly defend the game 
with the, that kind of mindset, like I am not able to do that. And so there's just some times where there's just a lot of that going on. And there's also a lot of times where there's just loads of downtime. Like I ultimately don't really see the need to constantly be making stuff about Neverwinter just to make stuff. So that's probably why you won't see like a lot of stuff from me whenever I'm not playing it. But my ultimate, <laughs> my ultimate year's worth of playing it and my ultimate review on Neverwinter is that there was like a time I could not put this game down. I mean, I couldn't. I was like, I, my vision, I had to go to the eye doctor because this game is naturally a bit blurrier than other games. Like it's just, it just is, you know, get over it. That is, it is, it's hard to read sometimes. I was thinking that my vision was going bad. Well, I learned that it's actually, once I stepped away from this game over years that I, like my eyesight wasn't that bad and I was able to like read things I couldn't read again. Like I, my <laughs> vision like repaired itself. Um, and, and you just start to learn that, that it's not about how fun the combat is or anything like that. I think the combat's fun. It's about the care and time and effort that the development team doesn't put in in order to make that experience really good for everyone. And they're willing to just put things out with th without proper testing and without like that extra care. And the reason I can say that is I've gone and played games that have that extra care and you don't run into those, um, oh, you know, you run into a piece of content and someone will tell you, oh, you can't do that because it's broken. So you gotta, you gotta do this, like, or this boss will do this because it's busted. It will glitch out here. So you gotta do it this certain way. And there's plenty of games I've gone to play, MMOs and other games. Um, and it's not like that. And that made me see things a lot differently walking away and coming back to the game. It's like they will just put anything out without really that extra care. And that's, I think, at the end of the day where I struggle to continue coming back at that point. But there are some things that I think are fantastic about Neverwinter. And I still think having an open market where people can buy, sell, and trade things like on the auction house, as well as like being able to convert AD into Zen, and Zen into AD, however you want to look at it. Those are really good concepts that not a lot of games offer. I do think the combat is good and I don't dislike the classes, though going to play other games like Final Fantasy, I realized that they actually just pulled all of the classes and abilities that they changed in like Mod 16. They pulled that from Final Fantasy. Also, one of my favorite trials was at the time like Tom is my favorite trial but Zariel was one of my other ones I realized Zariel is actually a complete copy and paste from a, a raid or a trial sorry in Final Fantasy I mean it's okay to have inspirations from other MMOs and I wouldn't blame them for having that inspiration from Final Fantasy 14 because it's you know it's a very amazing MMO it's kind of like the superior MMO in my opinion to all of them um but yeah, it was so obvious and blatant that it made me start to wonder if they were able to think of anything for themselves. And of course, you know, I I learned that they really can't and they don't really know how to properly test things they put out and they think it like it's a good idea, but then they don't like pull through with it. The last thing I'll say is like one of the most recent things was like the celestial enchants. I feel like if the community didn't just completely blow up about the fact that it couldn't be made into an account wide enchant, I felt like that was probably going to be the end of the rope for them. So I'm glad they figured something out, even if they made it technical, I am glad they figured it out. But originally they had no intentions of figuring it out right away, which that kind of makes me, <laughs> at least we got what we wanted, but you have to put up a big fight. Now that's that shouldn't have to be a thing. They should have the player's interest at, you know, the player's best interest at heart. And it felt like they just simply didn't. Anyway, so that's the beginning of my morning routine. Um, that was my first um, invoke cycle. So I go there, I try and grab all of their um, daily bags if I can. If I forget, that's fine because I have to go back through the cycle throughout the day until I get to my last invoke and that's just so I can get the celestial coins and then I will go through and start selling all the visors usually so it doesn't fill up my inventory because it makes it very like clunky. But as you can see 55 characters can take you a long time. Uh, 
I know we sped up a lot of this video, but it can take you easily like 30 minutes to an hour. I'm sitting here chatting away, but when you have to go through the whole invoke cycle again, the, the logging in and out that the game does to you just randomly is the worst part of the whole thing because sometimes it will just kick you off the game completely and that's horrible. So yeah, uh, get your visors, sell it for gold, get your baggies, get your prayer, try and get through all of your invokes each day and when you do that on 55 characters, as long as there's not an event, you can usually get that done by the midday, like 12 o'clock. <laughs> And then hopefully some people are on for you to run content with. So that was my past morning routine. And then I get up and I get something to eat and uh, kind of hang out, do some work, and then go and run stuff later. But yeah, I don't recommend anyone having 55 characters. I don't even want them anymore. I really don't. But yeah, that's just me. I hope everyone's still enjoying themselves, whether they're playing Neverwinter or playing something else just know if you're taking a break from Neverwinter I think people should understand and if you're really still enjoying it and playing it people should also understand so just do what you want to do everyone and if you're interested in maybe a nice morning routine that's going to take up a lot of your time try out mine anyway guys depending on when the next video will be I'll see you then take care bye bye